right, after I got my strips cut, I started making my laminated combing. Now what I do is I made me a form. I've actually got two or three of them in the shop for the combing. This is the inside shape that comes with your plans if you decide to make your own. I made mine out of some plywood. I cut some strips on here. So as you can see, I can use clamps to hold those laminations in place. Uh, if you're going to make one, you may want to cut some holes in here, some slots so that you can get your clamps uh, centered. I'm using a strap clamp in addition to those, so I don't need it. Now I'm going to start by taking this old one off. I've already put two or three strips on here. And I'm going to remove these clamps real quick. And now I've got strips cut. Let's run them through the planer. I've got them nice and smooth. Knock that off. And we're going to glue one on. Now I cut these in length so that it doesn't come around and overlap. Because if it does, it's harder. So I cut them in half. And mine's going to end somewhere over here. It takes a little longer. But the shorter pieces are a little easier to work with. All right, I'm using Type Bond 2, excuse me, Type Bond 3. Waterproof glue. Had excellent luck with this. I take a little acid brush, spread it out. Especially on the end down here where it's going to butt up. Let's see, I want to see it actually squeeze out when I put it in there. Use two spring clamps because I want to put the strap on as we go and let it pull it down. But first, you got to bend it around this corner. And here's a little tip. Now, this is white oak I'm using just because that's what I happen to have. And I've got a heat gun here. And people always talk about steam bending. And steam bending is a great technique, but watch this. I can feel that relaxing as I get it hot. The heat is what makes it move. It's not the water. You don't need to soak them in water and then try to bend them. Or only thing steam does is carry the heat there, and the steam is, what, 212 degrees? Of course, I have trouble keeping a steam box above 200. It keeps it from burning the wood. I mean, you could do this over a fire, but you're liable to catch them on liable to catch it on fire. There we go. I've got that in place. Now, I want to put this strap around it. Enough glue there. I want to this up here. Tighten this up. <clears throat> now that's really tight. And I see a little squeeze out, but I also see some gaps that I know you can't see on camera. So, and this is what I say. I mean, this, if I had known this, what I know now, when I designed my combing, I would have made this more of an arch. And this strap clamp would have worked a lot better. So instead, we just have to take some of these on here and pull those gaps tight. I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera. Well, these a little wider. And there we go. And we'll just continue to do that all the way around until I'm satisfied I've got this thick enough. Got my combing lip finished up, all my laminations done. And regardless how careful I am, I never can get these perfectly flat. So I have to smooth them out. And I'm a big fan of hand tools. I'm not against power tools, and I realize a lot of people don't use them. They're not popular. It's not some romantic thing. Uh, I just like the way they work. They're a little slower, but they allow you to do a lot more precision work. I could come at this with a belt sander and hack it down in, in a third of the time probably but I can also screw it up about 10 times as fast. So using hand planes gives me a chance to slowly bring this down and, and keep it nice and level, and I think I do a better job. 
So let's get this done and we can move on to the next step. finally got the combing pretty much finished it's sanded planed all that stuff and i've said before about how many how long it's taking it's not that many hours uh, of labor but there's a lot of hurry up and wait because you glue on a lamination you wait you glue these on you wait the actual time to build is not that long the final step we got to drill the holes in here so you can sew it on and this is not a hard job but it's kind of time consuming um one of the things you have to do first is measure all the way around and get your circumference, the outside edges of it. And I've already done that, and I believe it was, let me see, 89 and a quarter inches. I typically space my sewing holes or stitching holes about one and a half inches. I did a little math and figured out that will work because it'll never come out even. That'll work good. I'll come out with a little oddball spacing, but it won't show. And what I do is I put the oddball spacing right in the back. Most people walk up to your boat, they're gonna see the sides of the combing, they're gonna see that front edge because it's sticking up. This is kind of down and low, and I've always found this to be the least notable spot. So the tools of the trade, you're gonna need a cloth measuring tape, some kind of little clamp, a pencil, wherever that went, and if you're like me, glasses. And I will start approximately dead center. I don't worry about it being exact, I just eyeball it. Then I'm going to take my measuring tape and get you a good chair because this is kind of a time-consuming process. And I put my tape on there. And I take one of these little clamps. I wonder if that'll fit over this way. Yes, it will. It's out of my way. And line it up with my mark. And then I just go down through here every inch and a half which is a little can there we go one and a half and one and a half and you get the idea and work your way all the way around the combing then when we get back to this end I sh I'll show you a little more detail of what I do there okay I've worked my way all the way around of course I had to move my tape and clamp it here and when I get to the back I'm not gonna try to show you detail because say this is never intended to be a how-to video but I came around I'm one and a half one and a half and then I've got about a half inch gap and I've got two options here I can either leave that and just drill them a half you know the back ones half inch apart or I can move, adjust these over Say so go back six inches and slide them over just enough to get it even, and it really doesn't matter. This cho this case, I chose just to leave the half inch dead center. Uh, most likely, nobody will ever notice it. Now, with all the locations marked, we got to drill the holes. Right. Now I've got my marks on here. I'm pretty certain you will not be able to see the pencil marks in this cheap little camera, but right through there, every inch and a half, is my my spacing for my holes. And now I need to come up and mark them. And what I've done here, or what I'm about to do here, is use a little marking gauge. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, this is an old tool. It's an old Stanley I picked up. You can get these off eBay pretty cheap, brass face. But you put it, it has, all right, let's back up. It has a little spike right there. And it'll scratch a mark in here. And since I'm going to paint this, the thread's going to cover it. This is not going to matter, and I'm leaving a little groove. But I've got it set for my height. I'm going to put it right up here. And I just scribe me a little, let me get it down. And I'm just scribing a little line right across there. And since that's where my holes are going, my thread's going to line right up with it. And just go all the way around. And then I can just line up with here and drill. As a matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and drill a couple. I do have a jig for the drill press, but I kind of like this better. So we'll just take it using an eighth inch drill bit, brad point. I'm going to go right there. 
There's your hole. One thing to keep in mind when you're picking out your hole size, you look at your needle. The needles I sell are actually a little bigger down here on the eye than they are on the shaft. So you make sure your needle will fit through there. But don't go any larger than you have to. I would have liked to go on a little smaller drill bit, but I don't have one. This is an eighth inch. Uh, I'd like to go on a 30 second smaller, but it's not going to hurt anything. But keep in mind that if you get these holes too big, when you're doing any rolling or anything or any wet conditions, there will get a little water through there, and you'd be surprised at how much you can get. I am finally finished with the combing. The last step in this is to go through and sand and clean up all the holes. You always have some burrs where, these, uh, where this breaks through. So sand them down. Watch through here. Sometimes the holes will clear. I'll take a drill bit or something, go through here and knock the burrs out. Make sure you didn't skip any. You're going to do that. The other side, clean it up too. And then I'm going to paint this one before it goes on the boat, but I can move on and do something else meantime. But once I get this painted, I am done with the combing, finally.